And so we come today to celebrate her. Come to celebrate our life and think about the memories and times in which she walked through the city of Wall, the Queens Girl, Hillcrest High School, the Albany woman who was a poet, an author, the spouse, 10, 23, 23, 10, those years that they were together. Her daughter, her beautiful daughter, I looked at her pictures in a hospital room with Becky, I said, is that Lily? She said, Lily? That's Karen. I'm like, oh my God, what resemblance. The love of her grandchildren, Charlie, June, Mike. And so we come today and we celebrate. As we open up our opening hymn, hymn number 267, Morning Has Broken. Those who can stand, please come and sing. Hymn number 267, Morning Has Broken. Thank you. 
takes control of the day of final war and the line of the final I hope that we can all be the hand of the trees and help each other out the task. We need it.
leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today is a day of great sadness, not only for me, but also for the people whose lives have been touched by the warmth and the kindness of this woman who is lying here. I wish I knew how many charities and hospitals and orphanages have benefited from her generosity. But now, no one will ever know, because she preferred to do all her good work anonymously. I'm sure a lot of people never even knew that she worked for 15 years in a leper colony. Yes, Celia Rubenstein <gasps> of all mankind. Okay, now that I've got your attention, <laughs> that was a reference from Golden Girls. Anyone who knew Carol knows how much she loved that show, as do I, and perhaps many of you. Carol often quoted from that particular episode. When someone in my life dies, I typically write down three words that come to mind when I think about them. Upon hearing about Carol's departure from our earthly orb, I modified that tradition and wrote directly to Carol. The answer was simply because I really thought I would be able to see her again. She seemed to recover from her heart attack. I saw her after that, and then honestly, I expected to see her after her next hospitalization. But that wasn't to, to be. So, here we go. Dear Carol, you've died. I'll add this to your list of accomplishments, but I'll think of it more as an interesting, very colorful and textured life that was well lived. I met you over a decade ago, along with your wife, Becky. You sent me a Facebook request beyond immediately. And well, my life has never been the same. We've always managed to have interesting conversations about life. But my life is a lifelong Episcopalian, and your life is a Jewish woman who converted to Christianity. About my work in social work, and your work in library sciences, about my work with flowers and your music and poetry, about politics, social concerns, and the world, and always, always about cats and dogs. You would ask me thought-provoking questions, possibly odd questions, which always served to enrich my life. And no matter how cryptic those questions might have been, I always knew you had a reason for asking. I would always challenge you by liking the status on your Facebook page, such as when you said you had to have a root canal. You would reply with, how could you possibly like this? <laughs> and my reply, it means that you have access to dental insurance, and that is a good thing for which to be grateful. Your reply was, yes. I got to read at your wedding in this very church, only 10 short years ago. And of course, Iris, my beloved and ancient Labrador, was the flower girl. The night before you died, I dreamt that Iris was in a field of flowers waiting for you. You arrived, and she went with you for a walk. You set off to have Skeddy behind you. You and I could have disagreements, but could always set them aside. After all, the two of us would find ourselves in strange situations 
always sitting with one another, witnessing whatever was going on around us, and simply looking at each other, our facial expressions revealing our true feelings to one another. Then we would howl with laughter, saying to whomever looked at us, oh, it's nothing, only to laugh some more. Your life wasn't easy, but you managed to parent your wonderful daughter, be an amazing grandmother, a spectacular partner and wife, a dedicated champion of your colleagues at SUNY Albany, a musician and published author, a person with an interest in gardening and volunteering, and after your retirement, you had planned to embark on a business venture. Everyone who knew you was enriched by your presence in their lives, and I'm glad to be among that number. I'll miss you, my friend, until that day when I see you again. Keep walking with Iris and keeping steady with Heidi. Thank you for being a friend.
one way 
weeks ago when we were going through the most difficult time in ICU. She said, I don't know if I can live without it. And as she said that, I looked up. Because that type of love, you just don't find out. And I said to her, if God had told you 23 years ago when you were on my that you were going to meet your soulmate, your wife, your best friend, your road dog, and he said, I'm going to give you 23 years together in a 10 year marriage, would you take it? Becky said, yeah. She said, yeah. And I said, there we have it. See, my brothers and sisters, you don't find that around the corner. I met Carol 36 years ago at the university before I knew there was a bank. And I met her downstairs in the microfish area. <laughs> I was lost. She knew I was lost. <laughs> and she searched me out. Not having any idea that I would know and sit in this pulpit in 2013, turn my back, and then she goes like this and pokes me with a guitar in her hand. And I'm like, Carol? <laughs> you gotta understand, I've seen Carol not only as a student, but I've worked with Carol as a professional. She was in the union, she was in NC NCBI, she was an advocate for the Mesa Beats, and although she might not have been as loud at times, or maybe sometimes too loud, or maybe not loud enough, her presence was always known. One of the most memorable things I think of with Calvin, when I'm preaching about love in this pulpit, and I look at the last row, and I see Carol put her chin her on Becky's shoulder. That's it. Look at them love love. <laughs> it helped me with my story. It helped me to understand and know that love comes from God. And when you share it with one another, it explodes. I think one of my saddest moments is going to be when we're in fellowship downstairs. And Becky, like me, she like to talk. I don't know if y'all know that. And Becky, like me, got a uh, Charles time to go. And I can hear Carol from afar saying, Becky, it's time to go. That's what I'm going to miss. Because Carol is like, let's go. D like, let's go. Carol and Charles want to talk. I mean, Carol and Becky just want to talk and talk and talk. That's what I'm going to miss. That's what you're going to miss. See, my brothers and sisters, that this time for everything comes with a season. I can honestly say to you, as I heard the poems and heard the songs, I, 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 I get teary eyed and sad because I know that she's in a better place, contrary to where we are today and how we feel right now. When you lose someone you love so much, when you lose someone, begin to look like them. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. I'm going to make a joke. You know, Becky and Carol will come as they are. There's never been a time that I ever thought I would be preaching a eulogy with jeans on. <laughs> There's never a time that I thought I was going to do karaoke. Hello. But on Carol's surprise birthday party, she had it lined up. If you were there, you were going to sing, or you better go on the other way. So me sitting up in the front, looking around, she turns right at me with the microphone and goes. And I'm like, are you kidding? She said, this part of the duties? So I get up there, and I sing the Thompson Twins. <laughs> oh, lay your hands. Now, contrary to me with my soul music and gospel and jazz, I kind of like some of that music. So one of my colleagues in the church said, you picked the whitest song. <laughs>
narrow space. But at some moments, I brought such joy. Because I knew the journey she was going through as she was contemplating retirement. We talked for hours on the phone back and forth about the possibilities and what. And I said, this is the time for you and Becky to travel, see the world, see the grandkids, see Lily, see Mike, see the sister, go to Indiana. And she came to the conclusion. The next time I saw her, and I know this is from my installation service. And I say, I say they, they come as they are. But Carol came in there with khakis on, an Oxford shirt. I'm like, boy, I'm on the court. <laughs> Carol got to trust me. And in fact, these folks, they walk past me with their khakis on, and Oxford's. I'm like, I know I'm on the court. They trust me. <laughs> That's who she was. She'd go there and she'd come she go there next to me. Now I remember when she had a heart attack. I was in the hospital. I looked at her and said, "What are you doing here?" And she looked at me like, "Can you believe it?" I'm like, "Life, life." But I'm gonna say to you, Becky and her had that First Corinthians thirteen thirteen: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. They have a love, affectionate love for one another, to finish each other's sentences, to look out for one, each other. I'm going to remember them as the 23 slash 10, 10 slash 23. Becky, Lily, Mike, grandkids, nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I need you. I need us to keep texting her. I need us. I need you. I need you to remind me to check in on her. I need us to not think about the bad, but all the good that Carol wrote. Carol is a great book. You ever read a great book? The book is great. But you got some chapters in it. It can be kind of complicated. They don't flow as easy. Kind of confusing. Like, where is this going? But at the end, when the book is finished, you close it and say, what a good book. That's what we got here. Oh, not a good book. Great book. Book. She touched lives. She poked lives. She challenged lives. She loved life. I remember the Sunday I got the call to come to the hospital. And I said, okay, I ate the two hot dogs, got dressed and showered. Now as I was walking in the parking lot, Lily was coming in the parking lot. We came up to the room together, and I saw the rider guy the wife, the friend, best friend, laying next to the love of her life. And I said, I started praying, God, I had a good prayer for Cal. Wasn't well, praying for Cal. God already had it set. He knew what he was going to do. God knew what he already was going to do. I was praying for Becky, for Lily. Mike, grandkids, mom, Jen, nieces, nephews, family, friends, the congregation was praying for everybody. Because we're about to lose someone. And I remember about 11, 30, 40, 12, and I said, I ain't going to be no good to y'all today. So I'm going to go home. Sit right around the corner from the hospital. And I said, she's not leaving. She's not leaving. I just knew. Get there that morning. Back the time. She said, you will be here now. And Lily said, no, he said 10. You got your 10 and 10. But when I got there, I could feel the presence of God. And I could know the way she was breathing. The God was prepared. He was preparing with y'all online. He was preparing in Indiana. He was preparing in Massachusetts. 
this very University of Albany, and we were right there. No more pain, my brothers and sisters on this side. No more pain. If I didn't believe that, I couldn't stand up. If I really didn't believe that she was in a not in a better place, I could not stand. I could not get up in the morning if I did not believe that this beautiful sister of mine, Carol Jewel, was not in a better place. You can believe what you want to believe, but I believe she's in a better place. And so on this side, we're left to remember this person. When David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, I will say no evil. But thou art with me, thou God in this day. They comfort me. Thou preparest a place in the presence of my enemies. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's when David was at the midst of the brink of death of his life. And in the end, he said, though I walk, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. And God is with our sister today. I want you to remember the good times. It is a sad moment. Now, I'm not going to take that away. Life is hard. I've come to realize the older I become, the less I know, the more difficult life becomes. But through it all, and us sticking together, loving one another, cherishing the memory of this woman and her spouse and her children and her grandchildren and her nieces and her nephews and her mother, her sister, all of us as we cherish her memory and remember she fought the good fight. So long, my sister. I love you. We love you. That night, Becky said, I love her too much to let her suffer. My brothers and sisters, that's true love. When you can love somebody more than you can love yourself, then ain't no blood relative to you. That's love. See, my brothers and sisters, as I can prove, there's two things every human being want to know. I don't care what walk of life they come from. I don't care what they come from. They want to know, have I loved somebody, and has somebody loved me? Well, we take every one of us out of the room, and I just leave Becky and Carol. Becky can say, I love her, Carol loved me, she loved, we love each other. That's what they have, and that's what we have if we allow ourselves I want to have the love for all of you. Love that I have for my wife, the same love that Becky had for her own account. And because of that, she lived a great life. So I say to you today, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me. In my Father's house there are many men. I go prepare some place for you, Carol. And where I rest, you rest. And that's where Carol is. She right now is in a mansion, y'all. Chilling. Walking with Iris. Iris can even poop in <laughs> that, that, That's how good. Carol ain't got to worry about no medication. Carol ain't got to worry about no. She's chilling. What she's saying is, Becky, it ain't your time. But when it becomes your time, up here and join me. But I'm all right. I'm all right there. I'm all right. Carol is all right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Next, we will have a soul by the lesson. It's so good. Oh, no, no I'm sorry. No, no I'm sorry. My, my tree. Oh, no. Correction. Uh, scripture. Uh, Brother Scott. Sorry. I think I'm in a regular service that I'm not going to get a song. You know? <laughs> uh,
If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have the faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love.
Alpha, one, Alpha, 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 Alpha,
Amen.